left guard the entire time, number 75. I'm not going to have to point him out very much to you. Again, it's 67 plays, uh, which is quite a marathon. Uh, the, the next couple of shows I'm going to do are, are fairly long. Even Whitehead's going to be 50 plus, just a little bit over 50 plus. Uh, Conklin is just, I think, 50 plus. Uzama's 50 plus. <laughs> Reed is 60, so like, or 67. So um, quite a few of these. I, I really made them two, three hour shows each because they're all big signings. Um, and when you watch an entire season of a guy, think about it, you know, just to get to 70 plays, you know, you're only recording three or four plays from a game. Um, so that, you know, average ish. So left guard, wide hand. Um, yeah, now this is, I'm just talking about in terms of, in terms of reach blocking this guy. Um, I would like, I would like to see his inside hand, um, shoot a little bit more direct instead of how it opens up drops and then comes up and it comes wide. Um, you really want to work into, you know, the, the chest, the outer pec right there and use that, that hand as a pivot point to get your hips underneath the block and get that positional leverage, which eventually turns into to, to, uh, physical leverage, which you want. But initially it's, it's, it's positional. Then you get into physical, but part of that is having that, um, hand a little bit more, um, not ready, but more direct and, and into a better spot. Because when you, when you're run blocking a guy and yeah, he's, he's getting that position leverage, but the problem here is this hand comes from low and wide. This hand comes, which it normally does like that catch hand, that catch backside hand, which will bet and will, uh, bet and will teach. That's fine. Uh, but when both your hands are end up wide and the guy gets into your chest, it's going to be really hard for you to, to control him. Um, and to really, to really just hold your ground. And as we can see here, he never is able to get, um, the defender's hands off of his chest and he gets bull rushed right back into uh, the gap that the running back is trying to cut through. So we want to see um, tighter hands there. And obviously again, you know, for the people who are going to be watching uh, just the beginning, because you're not a subscriber, again, these are laid out in no specific order. So whatever plays you get, you get, um, I'm not showing good and bad or bad and good. They're just good or just bad. It's just how they came in there when they're being recorded. So um, left guard right here, wide hand, Okay. Again, similar situation here um, in terms of hand placement. This time, it's coming. It's coming on a run block. Um, the thing that we do want to see here is you can see his left foot gets a little bit stuck in the ground. We want to see him have a little bit more active feet. Now, the thing he is stepping inside because his his primary threat is obviously inside of him. There's nothing else really around him. Um, so it looks like you have a Gilligan ISO, and then these two, the, all four of these guys are are in, in their gap protection to their right. Um, so he's going to step inside because this guy is inside. He's not worrying about this guy anyway, the, the email. Um, so with all that being said, it's fine to step inside. We want to see more active feet. See this get stuck a little bit in the ground, um, and leads to him not really being under his punch. His punch ends up coming wide because his feet can't really, you know, his, his feet aren't moving with him. So now that, that, that punch becomes containment because he's, again, he's reaching for it a little bit. So it kind of just throws him off hand wide. Other hand is, I think, relatively wide as well. He's never really able to to regain the the control of the block. He tries to scoop his hand underneath and come for for, for the one under. Um, it's not able to completely land um, cleanly, or at least in a powerful position. He stood up right here. Back is completely up. Hand wide. Other hand was wide at the at the jump. Again, never able to control the defensive lineman, uh, who ends up getting uh, or hitting Garoppolo for um, the quarterback hit pressure or whatever. I don't know if a pressure is, a, is a, I don't know if a hit's always a pressure too. I, I, I don't know how they label those things. I really don't. So um, Tomlinson work hands. Okay. Left guard against 93. He's a three tech. Yeah. So now we like that he's coming off the ball um, pretty quickly. The thing that we, the, the one of the obviously things that we like, good base, good knee bend. Um, good. Looks like good arc arc in the, uh, in the lower back hands on guard, nice and nice and tight, a little bit low. Well, it's they're, they're nice and tight. They're, they're good on guard hands. Um, strike timing guy gets into that contact window. Boom. Double, double punch, which again, with a guy, when a guy is more squared up on you, you're, you're, it's that you definitely have the more flexibility to, to double punch when you're double punching when the guy's on the, on the outside, obviously depending on the situation, but typically, um, it's either going to open that outside. It's, it's going to level now. It's, it's going to lock your hips. 
it's gonna be really hard for you to get inside. And sometimes it could even kind of screw you up on outside because your hips are getting locked. So you have to be really careful to end up punches when you're in more of a phone booth with a guy, much more, um, it's much more acceptable to use a double hand, double hand punch lands into the chest. And then we're just continuously seeing him working his hands. Because again, when you, when you initially punch a guy, you know, if you do get both those hands on, once they start, you know, um, getting low, trying to get into trying to transition that initial rush into a bull rush, your hands being straight, they're never just going to, they're never going to stay straight. He's, he's not going to push you at an exact direct angle. He's going to be trying to move side to side. So you're never going to be able to just keep your arms like this. So you want to, um, at a certain point, obviously get underneath of them, double unders, ideally get into that bridge, get into that anchor. Um, but it's a lot more about lift and push. But when you're initially punching a guy that's, that's conducive to push because, um, you're not going to lift from that, from that far away. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, lift is for when you're in tighter. Um, and here again, we're seeing him initial punch, two hands, refit the right hand. He goes inside, drops the post a little bit. Um, just to, just to match him. drops the post left hand also comes under right hand, then refits. And it's, and it's really good that we're seeing alternating too. You don't you don't want to really in very rare situations. Do you want both your hands going off the, off of the defensive lineman? Um, so the fact that we're seeing him alternate hands to get under him is, is, is very nice. So good job working the hands there by Tomlinson, uh, reach. Okay. Left guard, obviously. Now the play gets blown up. Um, it's not necessarily his fault, but the, the thing that we can say, actually, let me bring up um, his um, article as well. I'll, I'm going to read this list of strengths and weaknesses, but I just want to get the size real quick. 6'3", 220. So he's, he's, a, he's a good size guard. Um, he's not small. That, that's, that's for sure. So um, you can see the, the, the explosive movement off the ball. So you see some, we see, we see some short area explosion um, off the ball, uh, uh, off the ball there. Again, um, I can't really tell if that, if that left foot is doing exactly what I think it's doing, but it uh, looks like a little bit of a scooch technique. Again, both those, both those feet, um, little like, like par you know, parallel, uh, steps, almost like a shuffle and we're going to lose a little bit of ground. Typically the, the steps are a little bit backwards. Um, you can see him frontwards though too, but, uh, you see him a little bit backwards and again, you're losing that ground vertically to gain that ground horizontally to get that positional leverage in front of him when the play obviously outside zone to the, to the offense is left. He wants to get that positional leverage, which is, you know, just the front side gap, um, away from the defender or, or towards the play. So good, um, good moving off the ball. Again, in this situation now he's able to work his right hand into the chest and use it as a pivot point. Obviously, um, if a guy is going to be tight or backside of you, it's going to be your, it's going to be that, that backhand, um, almost using that as a, as a, as a pivot point, the main point of contact when he's in front of you, like a gap in front of you, that typically it's that play side hand, that's going to, that's going to start to turn him. And eventually, hopefully if you, if you turn him enough, then that left hand becomes the hand that's more in the middle, um, of the chest area. So reach block, um, again, good job with the movement off the ball. The right hand looks like it's pretty tight. You can see the right hand is ready very early into the rep lands into the chest, left hand lands into um, the rib area. And he's able to just hold up his guy enough to open this gap. If it were to be there now, obviously it's not his, his fault that the, the center didn't really, you know, center let a uh, guard exchange here for, uh, for the interior defensive lineman that doesn't work out. But for Tomlinson, this is a really good position for his own block. This, this gap is open. Um, but obviously because of other circum uh, circumstances, it, it's not, um, <clears throat> it's not going to be uh, able to be hit by the, by the running back, but this is a good, a good gap for or created by Tomlinson and the, uh, and the left tackle. So <clears throat> Tomlinson regained balance. Okay. Uh, left guard. Yeah. So the thing about this, this, this play is he's trying to, he's trying to jump set this guy. Um, not even jump set. He's like, he's like, uh, I think, um, what's his name? McNally refers to this as up kick. It's not like a, like a, it's, it's the same thing as a jump set, but when you're, when you're, when you're up foot, is it, or is it kick? I'm blanking out. I'm, I might be, I might be wrong, but he refers to the, the post foot coming up first. He calls it an up kick. 
Um, but again, don't quote me on that. I believe uh, that's what, McNally, uh, what McNally says. Um, I'm just blanking out on some of the terminology again, obviously uh, the coaching clinics and stuff you it's in my notes somewhere, but um, nonetheless, jump set, jump set, up kick, uh, the two eye tech. And the thing you have to be careful with is it looks like he shoots two hands initially. And again, if you're shooting two hands, you got to be really, you, you have to be really sure that you're going to land onto that guy because again, obviously just, just basic like knowledge of the human body. If, if he's, if he's lunging with two hands and the guy is not there for those hands to meet, um, <clears throat> he's going to be off balance because his balance, his, his weight's going to be going way forward. Um, that's what happens here. Initially, he goes to again, up kick, jump, jump set this guy. Um, the hands come a little bit, look, it look like they come a little bit wide instead of a direct angle. Um, but nonetheless, it's really hard to see exactly what happens. And, you know, in terms of this window right here, the hands are not able to land cleanly as 97, um, uses some, some lateral mobility, uh, plus a little bit of a club there to get past or, or initially past Tomlinson. The good thing about Tomlinson is the left hand does land and he's able to ride that left hand out. So, um, good job even though initially while being off balance, regaining that balance with that left hand um, as that main uh, point to regain his, his balance, left hand lands, rides it out, keeps it attached, refits or, uh, or gets that, gets, gets that right hand back into the fight, hips under him um, and is able to, to shut that block down. And, and now, you no, know, even though his hands aren't necessarily an, an ideal position right here, we're seeing him get leverage and then you're seeing him, you see how he rolls his hips, rolls the hips. And now, even though, again, he's high, you know, his, his hands are wide and high. They're on the shoulder pads right here. And obviously, like, ideally, we want, we want the chest area. Um, but we still see now it becomes a lift game. You know, it's not, it's, not the, it's not pushing. He's getting under those pads, nice tight elbow angle, and lifting him up instead of pushing. Again, you don't want to push first push. You want lift first push. He's pushing. You're lifting. Def you're deflecting that force upwards instead of trying to fight it, you know, pound for pound job gets into his bridge negative that guy is shut down once tomlinson gets into his into his uh anchor or his bridge you're not really going to beat him I, I i don't see that i don't see that happening uh so tomlinson uh strength okay obviously the left guard right here um and the strength and the strength part of this too comes from so so they're they're um they're running away from even even though it looks like it's it's like zone.